Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video will be looking at some practical tips for a problem we all face to some degree, lack of time. When you start looking for a job, your other obligations don't stop. You still have your personal responsibilities, and in some cases, you may even have another full-time job and work responsibilities that you have to keep up with. So how do you balance interviews and work? How do you optimize your interview preparation when your time is so limited? In this video, I'd like to offer three tips for you that can help you achieve a better sense of balance, reduce your stress, and help you be better prepared for interviews. Stay tuned! Recently, one of my students found themselves in a tough situation and asked me about it. They were in a difficult situation trying to balance interviews and work. Specifically, this student had noticed that they were struggling to schedule interviews into their busy work schedule. Between interviews and work responsibilities like meetings and deliverables, it was difficult to manage their schedule optimally. They were concerned that they would not be able to access all the opportunities they could and that they would not reach their full potential as candidates because of the stress of managing interviews and work. All of that scheduling conflict also meant that their interview preparation time was limited. It was definitely a tough situation, and I think this student is not alone. Many people face similar problems. So that's why I made this video for you guys. I want to share with everyone the same advice I gave this particular student and a little bit more. The first tip I have for you is to have a gap between work and interviews. It may sound obvious, but it soon gets ignored when your schedule becomes busy. When you are in a situation where time is tight, one of the first things that happen is your schedule starts to get cramped. What I mean by that is that you start scheduling one thing after the other to make the most of your limited time. You may have an interview right after a work meeting. Your various activities start to get closer together as your schedule fills up. Although this can feel efficient, it's not a good idea when it comes to interviews. You need some time gaps around your interviews to give yourself time to context switch and get yourself in interview mode. By giving yourself gaps between interviews, you have time to get focused before each interview. If you try to immediately switch between work and interviews, you are going to be tired and likely will not perform as well in the interviews. So you do not want your interviews crammed into your day right after work meetings or other tasks. Just how much time you need depends on what type of interview it is. For a technical phone screen like a product case interview or SQL interview, I recommend making sure that you have at least 30 minutes before the interview to gather your thoughts and context switch. For an on-site interview, you are going to need to give yourself much more time. These interviews are usually 5 to 6 hours, and therefore I recommend that you take the whole day off from work for this. Trying to work and spend 5 to 6 hours interviewing in a single day is more than you can safely manage. You don't want to overburden yourself with something as important as a job at stake. Similarly, I also believe that it's important not to schedule interviews back to back. An on-site interview takes a while and can be draining. You don't want to have to do that with different companies two days in a row. You won't be able to maintain peak performance during your interviews if you cram them all together like that. Moving on to my next tip, it may be surprising to some of you, but you can actually postpone interviews. When you are balancing work and interviews, sometimes no amount of clear scheduling will leave you with enough time to adequately prepare. Things happen and you might have to dedicate lots of time to do things unexpectedly. In this case, it's best to accept that you don't have enough time and alter your strategy to give yourself more time. The first small thing you can do to give yourself more time is to simply not schedule the technical interviews with the recruiter right away. Typically, after you talk with the recruiter, they would like to schedule interviews with you as soon as the company decides to move forward. But you don't need to schedule interviews immediately. It's totally okay to schedule interviews a few weeks out. By doing that, you will have more time for preparation. So scheduling an interview out in the first place can give you more time to begin with. But you may also end up in a situation where you have an upcoming interview and know that you won't be ready in time. For example, you have an important deadline at work and you know you won't have much time to do the preparation. What do you do in this case? Is it really okay to postpone an interview? Yes, in my experience, it really is okay. It's far better to postpone an interview than to go when you aren't prepared. Postponing could mean a higher chance to get the job, since you will be far better prepared, but it can feel risky if you have never done it. So let me first clarify when you want to use this tip. 
there are two conditions. The first one is you know you're not going to be ready for the interview. How do you know that? You can do mock interviews and have another person evaluate your performance objectively. For coding interviews, you can use an online coding platform to see if you are able to solve problems within a limited time. Another condition to using this tip to postpone an interview with a company is you never postpone any interviews with that company before. If you have done it already, then it's better to stick with the original time because rescheduling interviews multiple times may indicate you are not motivated to interview with that company. So postponing an interview is a tactic for dealing with situations where you are overwhelmed. You can postpone one interview with a company, especially if it's an on-site interview and you know you are not going to be ready. It's important to make sure that you let the recruiter know that you want to postpone at least a week before the interview. Also, you need to have a solid reason. You are postponing because you greatly value the opportunity and want to be fully prepared and you do not have enough time due to work responsibilities or personal responsibilities. You may think that postponing will hurt your chances as some companies may need to hire sooner and are probably hiring less people. So it's also critical to ask a recruiter how long the postponement is okay. For big companies, postponing one interview generally isn't a problem. These large companies usually hire continuously, so postponing an interview by even a month doesn't mean that you will lose the job. For smaller companies, they tend to move faster, so you need to be a little more careful and ask the recruiter how far away can you reschedule the interview. In my own experience and my experience with my students, postponing an interview is generally a smart move, but you don't want to abuse it and reschedule interviews frequently. It's used when you find yourself in a jam and cannot handle more. I'd suggest doing it at most once with a particular company and you shouldn't be postponing with every company. Alright, my final tip for time management when job searching with a tight schedule is to focus on one type of role. I talked a lot about the importance of focusing on one type of role in my other videos. For those of you who are familiar with this concept, I'm sorry to repeat myself, but this one is critical to help you limit how much preparation you need to do. Preparing for an interview takes time. And sometimes, the only way you can find enough time in your busy schedule to manage that preparation is by limiting how much preparation you need to do. Different companies need different types of data scientists, which means that the interviews are different. We can break data scientist jobs into two general categories, analytics-driven and algorithm-driven. Analytics-driven roles are data scientists that focus on, as you can probably guess, analytics. You need a strong product sense, a solid knowledge of A-B testing and statistics, and you need to be comfortable presenting analysis and findings. By comparison, algorithm-driven roles are more focused on machine learning skills. Some companies refer to these types of roles as applied scientists or research scientists. Generally, you need a good understanding of coding and machine learning for these roles. Because of their different emphasis, trying to prepare for both analytic-driven roles and algorithm-driven roles at the same time is practically going to increase your workload. And if you are struggling to find a workable balance between job searching and your current job, that much preparation work just isn't going to cut it. Interestingly, I have a friend who tries to prepare for data scientists, machine learning engineers, and data engineers roles at the same time. Eventually, it became too much to manage. I totally understand the thinking behind this. More interviews mean more opportunities, that's true. But more interviews do not mean more job offers. Typically, it requires in-depth knowledge to ace interviews, and developing in-depth knowledge takes time. That's why I always recommend focusing on one type of role and knowing what to expect. This will give you less to study, allowing you to better develop your skills and have enough time left for your job and other obligations. This tip essentially asks you to decide whether you want an analytics or algorithm position and then pursue the type of job exclusively. So on that note, that's all my tips for balancing interviews and work. There's no doubt that finding time for preparation and interviewing is tricky when you still have a full-time job. But you can find ways to leverage your limited time and make the most of every opportunity. Sometimes that means just giving yourself time to contact switch before jumping into the next thing, or it may mean having to postpone an interview until you are more prepared. I hope you found the tips in this video helpful. If you want to stay updated for more tips and other useful content about data science interviews, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Bye guys!